Photography gear is expensive. It can be tough to make the right decision when it's your first time buying something. Uh, tripods are no exception. I'll start by saying there's not a best tripod out there. Uh, anybody that tells you that is trying to sell you their tripod. Um, tripods are very much tools for photography. Just like kitchen knives, there's one for bread, meat, cheese, fish. It's about picking the right tool for the right job. Today I'm going to be talking about my three tripods and what I'd look for if I had to go shopping for another one today, some pros and cons about those tripods, and the use cases for each. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to start with this little Joby Gorillapod. Uh, this is like under the $100 mark, so pretty accessible to most people. Uh, can be good to fit in a bag. We'll talk about more details on that later. Uh, next, I've got a Manfrotto. It's an Art 190. They might not make this exact model anymore, but they probably have something pretty close on their website. Uh, last but not least, I've got this other Manfrotto tripod. It's got a 141RC head and it's the 055C legs on the bottom. Uh, you can buy tripods separately, like the head can come separate and you can get different legs with it if you want, which makes them a little interchangeable for different jobs, which is quite nice. So obviously every tripod manufacturer wants you to buy their tripod, so they'll use a lot of features and things say like, oh my god, our tripod does this, while well, nobody else's does, and there might be a reason for that. Uh, some of those things photographers don't actually care about because they want certain functions, which I'm going to go over now. The things I'd look for if I was buying a tripod today. Uh, so first and foremost is going to be the head type. The head of the tripod is everywhere from this plate and above. Uh, this tripod here is a ball head, the black one. It's nice because it packs quite small, can be a little finicky to get levels perfect. And over here we've got a three-way pan and tilt head. I definitely prefer this one over the ball head just in terms of being exact with my verticals and horizontal angles. But I also work in landscape and architecture, so that's where that comes from. If you're doing something that's a little more kind of like street based, this can be nice because it fits in your bag a little bit better. Another feature that can be super handy is a quick release plate. On the top of the tripod here, there's going to be a little plate, hopefully designed in metal. The plastic ones don't always get as tight as you'd like, uh, but you can put this on the bottom of your camera so it makes it a little easier to put your camera on and off the tripod here. If you have multiple cameras, you can get spares of these plates so it's every camera can really easily go on the tripod, which means you're going to be creating more images rather than switching plates all the time. Uh, if you already have a tripod and it's an older version, you might have one of those screw-on plates, which is super finicky, kind of like our parents' generation of photography tools. They are, can be really secure and stable, but it just takes a lot longer to spin them open to get the camera on and off the tripod, which can be a little frustrating if you go back and forth whenever you're shooting. The next thing you want to look for is the type of leg locks and actual feet on the tripod. Uh, these are my preferred type of leg locks. They're just a simple switch that open up. That allows me to extend the tripod leg, and then I just bring this down to lock it in. This way I can really easily visually see this whole tripod is all locked and tight. No legs are going to go anywhere, uh, and that's quite nice. The bottom of this tripod just has rubber feet, which is super handy. It works on all sorts of like tile, outdoor surfaces. I've never had a problem with it. The alternative to that style of tripod is having these kind of twist locks here. Now, I don't really like these. Um, I don't use this tripod as a result. Uh, they twist just open righty tighty lefty loosey. But again, there's no point where I want to twist this and it only be 70% tight every time. You're not always sure if it's 100% tight and I don't want to like crank it down and snap anything. I much more prefer the lever style locks. Uh, on the bottom of this tripod, we have two types of feet. One, we've got these rubber stoppers. And if I spin this down, it'll start to show this metal spike. Uh, the metal spike's designed for kind of more natural surfaces like dirt and grass, so you can really kind of dig it in to make sure it's not going to move anywhere. Uh, but it's, metal spikes aren't so great in clients' houses where they've got really expensive tile floors, linoleum, things like that, that you don't want to be scratching. So that's where you would spin this up and just get to a rubber foot. I'm on the rubber foot pretty much all the time, so the spikes don't really help the type of photography that I do. So last thing that I'd look for in a tripod is the actual total height of the tripod. So if I extend all these legs here, I'm just about six foot four, six foot five if anybody asks. And I want to make sure when fully extended and splayed out that these legs actually allow the camera to be at my eye level. I'm a super tall person, so that makes the options for me a little restrictive. If you're a little bit shorter, you'll have an easier time finding something that goes up to your eye level. The reason why it's important something to go up to your eye level is because if you have your tripod and it only goes up this high, that means every time you want to check back the camera, depending if your LCD comes out or not, you're going to be like this, and for a long period of time, this just gets super uncomfortable, it's not great posture, and it's all those little nice 
um, ergonomic things that make photography just easier to do. So if I were buying this, I'd go into the store, fully extend the legs, spread them out, see how tall the tripod is, put the camera I own on top of this, and see where the viewfinder is going to fall for my eye. Uh, I don't include the center column here in that height, so this tripod has you know, an extra six inches I can add here, but if I do that, automatically as soon as I start using the center column, you lose a little bit of stability. The strongest and most stable point of a tripod is the top point here, which is why it's designed to sit that place. So yes, it is nice to have a center column, but I want to measure just based on leg height alone. So early on in the video, I talked about the use cases and why I would bring each of these tripods with me. So starting off with that small one, this is something I take with me for personal travel. Uh, if I just needed to throw something in my bag to make sure my camera just literally gets above the sand, grass, beach, wherever I'm going to end up, or to get the camera in a really funny location. I know I'm going to be in a really tight spot, like working inside a bathroom. I could rig a camera potentially off a shower rail. Uh, it is a kind of niche tool, but it can really help you out in a pinch. So mostly personal use for my camera, but also great as an assisting tool just to provide a little more options to the photographer you're working for. Uh, next on my list, as you've kind of seen throughout the video, I don't love this thing. I got it in an auction because it was such a good deal, but I don't use it ever. I basically bring it as a backup when I'm assisting on set and also to help the photographer if I can set up in advance of them. So they're shooting multiple locations on a very short timeline. I can set up a tripod and camera ahead of them so when they show up, they can just pull out the backup camera, pop that on top of the tripod, get the shot, and they're off to the races. I can go grab the original location and kind of leapfrog ahead of them to make their workflow just a little bit faster. Then I wouldn't use it for my own work unless I kind of needed a happy medium in terms of weight and there wasn't enough room in my bag to bring the big one. Uh, finally, this monster here, any commercial job, I bring this with me just because it is my favorite tripod of the three. I like the control of all those levels, so if I'm going to shoot an architecture job or doing some fun landscape for personal work, things like that, uh, this is the one I go to. I like a heavy tripod, so this definitely falls under that category. I want a tripod that is always going to be heavier than my heaviest lens-camera combination. If your lens and camera are heavier than your tripod, you're going to be losing some stability. So nothing I have is heavier than this tripod. It's a bit of a monster, but I like that. I like having heavy things because you're trying to make that stable platform for your camera not to have any shake to increase the sharpness in your images, and that definitely ticks the box for that. So last but not least, I'll give the standard spiel about like, like, subscribe, comments. Uh, I'm making these videos for fun and really the only social karma I get from this and encouragement is from seeing people actually find these videos useful. So if you do, please do like and subscribe below. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers so that I can start to do live Q and A's. YouTube only allows you to do live videos once you've reached a thousand subscribers. So that's what I'm currently targeting. So if you think this was helpful, I bet you the future stuff I'm going to make is probably going to be helpful that you might want to know about. The link's down below in the description. Thanks so much.